My name is Lawrence Cram. I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Vice-President of the Australian National University. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to this evening's lecture, and particularly to welcome His Excellency Dr. Sayed Katami. I would also like to acknowledge uh, former Prime Minister, uh, Right Honourable Malcolm Fraser, the very large number of ambassadors uh, who are attending this evening. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the university as well. It is with immense pleasure, therefore, that I call upon His Excellency Dr. Syed Mohammed Khatami to address us tonight on the subject of dialogue, justice and peace. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, at the beginning I would like to appreciate the National University of Australia as one of the scientific center of the world which sponsored this great event. Particularly, I thank Professor Seiko, a head of the Islamic and Arabic Studies Center, who did his best of efforts to hold this meeting. Center for Islamic and Arabic Studies is one of the reputable scientific and research centers. Ali Janab, Janab Aghay Malcolm Fraser, Janab Aghay Riyasat Muhtaram Danishgahi Milli Canberra, Janab Aghay Professor Seikan, Ustadan. استادان محترم دانشجویان عزیز آقایان و خانم‌ها اکسنسی مکن فریزر یا فرمر پرایم منیستر دی دین اف دی ناشنال یونیورسیتی اف کمبرا دکتر سیگل دیر پروفسورز استیمد استودنتس لیدیز اند جنتلمن کمتر از 20 سال از نظریه چالش تمدن ها می‌گذشت که در یک عملیات تروریستی وحشتناک دو برج بلند نیویورک که نماد قدرت اقتصادی آمریکا بود فروخ ریخت و هزاران انسان در یک لحظه با سلاحی که چاشنی انفجار آن نیز انسان ها بودن به خاکستر تبدیل شد و نیز پنتاگون که مظهر توان نظامی این ابرقدرت بود هدف قرار گرفت Less than 20 years after the theory of clash of civilizations had been raised, the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York, which were typical of the United States economic influence, collapsed in a terrorist attack, killing thousands of people. Pentagon II, which is the symbol of the U.S. military power, was another target of attacks. Dar pein hadese siyaset jangi ve siti juyane Amerika فضای دلهراور و امنیت سوز را بر جهان حاکم کرد. Heaven were involved in provoking triggering the attack in the aftermath of the event an air of horror and insecurity dominated the world as a consequence of the US military and economic policies. و از هر دو سو بر تبل نفرت کوبیده شد. And drums of hatred were beaten by both sides of the conflict. در خود توجه است که این حوادث درست در سالی رخ داد که به پیشنهاد فردی از شرق و جهان اسلام با اجماعی کم نظیر سال گفتگوی تمدن ها نامیده شده بود It is noteworthy that all these incidents took place in a year named the year of dialogue among civilizations upon a proposal raised by a person from the Orient and the world of Islam آیا آنچه پیش آمد گواه بر درستی نظریه جنگ تمدن ها و پنداری بودن طرح گفتگوی تمدن ها بود؟ Did what happened vouch for the accuracy of the theory of clash of civilizations and the elusiveness of the dialogue among civilizations theory؟ من در اینجا با قاطعیت می گویم که این حوادث تلخ نه تنها لطمه ای به امکان گفتگو نمی زند 
بلکه آن را به عنوان یک ضرورت گریز ناپذیر که می تواند بشریت را از وضعیت ناگوار کنونی رهایی بخشد تایید می کند. I stress firmly that these bitter statements will not harm the possibility of dialogue but intensify it as an inevitable option that can save humanity from the current awkward situation. در لحظه حساس از تاریخ که در آن روابط میان انسان ها روز به روز پیچیده تر و نزدیک تر می شود و سرنوشت کشورها و ملت ها پیوستگی بیشتری به هم پیدا می کند و جهان به تعبیر رایج به صورت دهکده ای به هم پیوسته در می آید و تاریخ انسان با وضعیتی مواجه می شود که آن را جهانی شدن می نامن در چنین لحظه ای طرح گفتگوی تمدن ها با توجه و دقت به این امید مطرح شد تا سرمشق و پرادای می باشد برای زندگی انسان و جهانی که از زور و شقاوت و تبعیض و ستیز و ناامنی به تنگ آمده است و در عمق وجدان خود طالب صلح و همزیستی و عدالت است At a critical junction in history When human relationships are becoming more complicated and closer every day, with the destiny of countries and nations becoming more and more interdependent and the world having turned into what is commonly referred to as a global village, at a moment like this, the theory of dialogue among civilizations was presented in the hope of serving as an example and paradigm for humans who can no longer tolerate oppression, cruelty, discrimination, tension, and insecurity, and instead long for peace, peaceful coexistence and justice. زور و قهر و قلبه پارادای محاکم بر جهانی بود که در آن دو جنگ ویرانگر جهانی، جنگ های منطقی، جنگ سر، اشغال، سرکوب، تبعیض و آوارگی و بیپناهی انسان ها، بیپناهی انسان ها زندگی را بر بشر تنگ و تاریک کرده بود. Force, oppression and repression were the paradigms predominant in a world where two destructive world wars, regional conflicts, the Cold War, occupation, repression, discrimination and homelessness had cast a shadow on the lives of the people. و در پایان قرن بیستم میلادی پدیده نفرت انگیز تروریسم که پیشتر هم وجود داشت صورت وحشتناکتری به خود گرفته بود که همه انسانها را در همه جای جهان بیش از پیش تهدید و نگران می‌کرد. In the end of the 20th century, the repulsive phenomenon of terrorism which already existed was terribly intensified, worrying and threatening humans all over the world more than any time. طرح گفتگوی تمدن‌ها که پس از 11 سپتامبر با طرح اعتلاف برای صلح بر پایه عدالت به جای اعتلاف برای جنگ تکمیل شد و متاسفانه در فضای سرشار از نفرت و تهدید ناشنیده ماند بشر را در آستانه هزاره سوم میلادی به آینده بهتر امیدوار می‌کرد The dialogue among civilizations theory which was complemented after 11 September by a project named Coalition for Peace on the Basis of Justice to take the place of the Coalition of War. It happenstly fell on deaf ears at the atmosphere filled with hatred and threat would have made humans hopeful toward a better future at the threshold of the third millennium. But in the end of the 21st century, it was also because of the hope of the heart and the hope of the heart. I would like to give you the opportunity to give you the opportunity در باب گفتگو سخن بگویم. Nevertheless, what happened at the first decade of the 21st century once again let fear and panic take the place of hope. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to take this opportunity to address this very issue for a few minutes. در باب گفتگو از زمان سقراط تا کنون به خصوص در قرن بیستم فراوان سخن گفته شده است. The issue of dialogue has been spoken about to a large extent since Socrates. A great many theories have addressed various aspects of dialogue in areas of philosophy. In 
سیاست و شاخه ها و شعبه های گوناگون دانش و تفکر بشری نظریات متعدد مطرح شده است And as I stated, a great many theories have been addressed uh, various aspects of this dialogue in areas such as philosophy, sociology, linguistics, anthropology, politics, and other branches of human sciences and intellect. در برگرفته است و اگر ادامه یابد همه آثار و معاصر متمدنانه زندگی انسان را نابود می کند نجات دهد Genuinely speaking, as the proposer of the dialogue among civilizations, I not only firmly believe in the possibility of dialogue, but also recognize it uh, as a necessity that can save humanity from the crisis that dominates the east and west of the world شرایط حاکم بر جهان امروز نیز بیش از پیش ما را به ضرورت گفتگو میان تمدنها و فرهنگها به عنوان انسانی ترین راه رهایی از بحران رهنمون می شود. The global circumstances today help us realize the essentiality and significance of dialogue among cultures and civilizations. سخن بر سر این است که گفتگو در چه حوزه ای و میان چه کسانی صورت می گیرد و شرایط نتیجه بخش بودن آن چیست. However, the question is among who should the dialogue take place and in what area and what would help a dialogue to lead to effective results. Yek, anche man pishnahad mikonam guftuguye miyan tamadunha va farhang haas va dar avvalin gaam miguyam ke nemayandegan farhang ha va tamadunha siyasat madaran nistand. بلکه فیلسوفان، آلمان، هنرمندان و فرهیختگانی هستند که فرهنگ و تمدن را نمایندگی می کنند. First, what I propose is that dialogue should take place among cultures and civilizations in the first place and as a first step, I would suggest that it not be the politicians to represent cultures and civilizations but philosophers, scientists, artists and intellectuals who represent culture and civilization. در نتیجه گفتگو را نباید با مذاکره که عمدتا میان سیاستمداران صورت میگیرد و هدف آن جلب منفعت و دفع ضرر است و در دوران ما و شاید در طول تاریخ به تحمیل خاص و منفعت طرف قدرتمند به طرف ضعیف انجامیده است و اگر مذاکره به این صورت به پایان نرسیده است به جنگ انجامیده است اشتباه کرد As a result dialogue should not be mistaken with negotiation which is mostly what takes place among politicians and is aimed at winning interests and repelling harms negotiation throughout history has mostly secured the interests of the powerful side and been to the loss of the weaker side and has eventually led to war where no results have been achieved همچنین گفتگو با مباحثه که معمولا میان آلمان و مؤمنان بر سر مباحث علمی و اعتقادی صورت میگیرد تفاوت دارد. Dialogue is also different from debate which is a form of discussion among scientists and theologians over scientific and ideological subjects. پس گفتگوی تمدن ها سیاسی نیست ولی در زمانه ای که دیوار سیاست همه زندگی بشر را احاطه کرده است و متاسفانه سیاست روزگار ما سیاست جنگ است نمی شود از سیاست نگفت پیوند گفتگو با سیاست از این جهت است که ما را به تعمل در سیاست فرا می خاند. Dialogue of civilization is a political in, in nature. Nevertheless, at a time when walls of politics envelop the whole human life, and unfortunately, the politics of our time is the politics of war, one cannot speak of politics. گفتگو اما در ایچیز به گشودگی خود به دیگری و در صدد همزبانی و همدلی است. نه در صدد تحمیل سلیقه و منفعت خود به دیگری و در آن نشانی از تحقیر یک طرف توسط طرف دیگر دیده نمی شود. 
Dialogue, however, opens windows of exchanging ideas and sympathy with others rather than seeking to impose one's tastes and interests on others. There is no intention of humiliating the other. Do. اگر بنابر گفتگو میان تمدن ها و فرهنگ هاست آیا غیر از تمدن غربی که تمدن غالب است تمدن های غیر غربی منشه اثر هستند و آیا سخنی برای گفتن دارند؟ And the second is if there is uh, supposed to be a dialogue among cultures and civilizations will any other civilization than the predominant western civilization the non-western civilizations specifically be of any impact will they have something to say تصویر و تصوری که متفکران غربی در دوران غلبه روحی غرب و پیش از بروز نقدهای جدی به بنیاد تمدن غرب یعنی مدرنیت وجود داشت این است که دیگر تمدن ها سخنی برای گفتن ندارند When the Western world was in higher spirit and in a dominant position before the very foundations of its civilization seriously questioned by modernism, workers were convinced that non-Western civilizations had too little to say and that they were only desperate to hear and surrender. بلکه تمدن های غیر غربی گوش های و ناتوانی هستند که فقط باید بشنوند و تسلیم شوند یا به عبارت دیگر چنین پنداشته می شد که غرب که صاحب قالب و پویاس در ویرانه ای از آثار و معاصر تمدن های قرار گرفته است که دورانشان به سر آمده و حتی غرب و غربی رسالت دارد که انسان امروز را اکسیر تمدن خود متمدن کند امری که به پدیده زشت استعمار انجامید یا رفتار غربی را در استعمارگری توجیه کرد In other words, the chief concern was that the West owned a dynamic and dominant civilization being surrounded by the debris of civilizations whose time had come to an end and that it was incumbent on the West and Westerners to civilize today's human with the elixir of their civilization, which was the very mindset that led to the hideous phenomenon of colonialism and justified the conduct of the West at time of colonialism. William Roos, on in Angor of a Pendor, Rang But today, however, that mindset has lost its influence. As yek su qovati aftan hiss hoviyat va dil bastegi be sunnat o farhain va tamadun dar akbam qayr qarbi, va as suye digar moshkilati ki dar matn tamadun qarb baray khud qarbiyan va jahan ashkar shude, va naqd hay shalud shekani ki ala raghm dastavord hay shigift tamadun qarb ba anwar damad as bashar. به خصوص بشر غربی را در موقعیت مناسب تری برای گفتگو قرار داده است هرچند که بسیاری از سیاست مداران پندارگرا و قدرت طلب هنوز این آمادگی از این آمادگی برخوردار نشدند The degree to which non-westerners have found themselves enthused by their identity, traditions, culture and civilization on the one hand and on the other hand the challenges westerners have been faced within the context of their civilization coupled with the serious questions targeting the very foundations of the western civilization in spite of its wonderful achievements have all led the western human to be at a position more appropriate for dialogue let us not be worried about the big number of elusive politicians who are not yet prepared for dialogue به نظر می رسد که در هیچ مرحله از تاریخ چون امروز زمینه گفتگوی واقعی فراهم نبوده است. It seems that never in history have conditions been prepared for dialogue more than today. با گفتگو زبان مشترک پیدا می شود و با زبان مشترک فکر مشترک شکل می گیرد و با فکر مشترک روی کرد مشترک, مشترک در مقابل جهان و حوادث جهانی به وجود می آید از این رو حاصل گفتگو در نهایت همدلی و همزبانی است
dialogue will lead to a common language and a common language will culminate in a common thought and this one will turn into a common approach to the world and global incidents and for this very reason the result of dialogue will eventually be an exchange of goodwill ideas and راهبرد گفتگوی فرهنگ ها و تمدن ها از این حیث که در جستجوی جانشینی خود به جای قدرت در عرصه مناسبات ملی و بین المللی است راهبردی گشاینده در برابر انسداد روابط انسانی و اجتماعی است و تبیین و تدقیق مفهومی و کاربردی آن می تواند افق های جدیدی در عرصه های درون فرهنگی و برون فرهنگی بکشاید The dialogue among cultures and civilizations approach will open up human and social relations where they are blocked as it seeks to replace itself for the choice of force in national and international arenas. Practical clarification of and elaboration on the concept of dialogue among civilizations can open new horizons in intra and extra culture areas. الگوی گفتگوی فرهنگ ها واحد عمل را نه افراد بلکه در وهله نخست فرهنگ ها قرار داده است. The dialogue of cultures scheme puts uh, cultures rather than individuals at the forefront of action. به این معنا موضوع اساسی در این گفتگو نه فرد بلکه ساحت های جمعی است. Based on this very idea the major subject in this model is collectivity rather than individuality. اما از آنجا که گفتگو نیازمند گشودگی، گوش سپردن و همدلی است به پذیرش تنوع و تکثر و شخصیت و هویت مستقل در طرف این گفتگو تاکید دارد بنابراین طبیعی است که شرط مهم تحقق و نتیجه بخش بودن گفتگو این است که طرفین یا اطراف گفتگو همدیگر را به رسمیت بشناسند و به یکدیگر احترام بگذارند However, since dialogue is in need of opening up listening and empathy, it stresses the acceptance of plurality, variety, and independent individuality on both sides of the dialogue. Therefore, naturally an important condition for the materialization and success of dialogue is that the parties to that dialogue recognize and respect one another. Hal. اگر یک سوی گفتگو جهانی باشد که خود را برتر می‌داند و حتی عالم خود را پایان تاریخ به حساب می‌آورد و برای زندگی بشر هدف کمالی جز آنچه در فرهنگ و تمدن او تحقق یافته است نمی‌شناسد و در نتیجه تاریخ را که عبارت است از حرکت به سوی کمال پایان یافته می‌داند و فرهنگ و تمدن‌های دیگر را به رسمیت نمی‌شناسد یا اگر از طرف آن طرف طرف دیگر آن سوی مقابل را پلید و منحت به حساب می آورد و نفرت خود را از سلطه استعماری و استکباری سیاستمداران وابسته به آن تمدن به ذات تمدن و فرهنگ سرایت می دهد راه گفتگو و همزبانی بسته می شود Now if one side of the dialogue is a world that identifies itself Uh, as the superior side and even considers its universe the end of history does not acknowledge humans could achieve perfection as a goal unless that goal is set inside the frameworks of its culture and civilization deems history is at the end of a journey toward perfection and does not recognize other cultures and civilizations or the other side of the dialogue that condemns the other party as being decadent and declining attributing his hatred of that civilization and colonial and arrogant hegemony of its politicians to the very civilization and culture itself the road to dialogue and exchange of ideas will be closed در همزبانی هیچ یک از دو طرف خود را در موضع قدرت نمی بینند و از موضع قدرت سخن نمی گویند. In atmosphere of dialogue, neither side considers themselves as being in a position of power and would not speak from an upper position. اگر از یک سو احساس قهر و قدرت و غلبه باشد و از سوی دیگر احساس واماندگی و هرمان و مظلومیت هیچ کدام به دیالوگ نمی اندیشند. 
Should there be feelings of power and dominance at one side and the sense of despair and privation at the other side, a dialogue would never get materialized. بلکه اینها دو گروه سیاسی هستند که فکر می کنند مسائل باید از طریق قدرت حل شود و حتی آن که دستش از قدرت کوتاه است فکر می کند با قدرت نمایی غیر متعارف باید داد خود را بستاند و در این صورت دایره بسته بسته و ویرانگر استیلا طلبی از یک سو و تروریزم از سوی دیگر زمین را که بنا بود طبق تمنای پیشوایان تمدن غرب همان بهشتی شود که ادیان وعده داده بودند به جهنم سوزانی مبدل خواهد کرد که خوشکتر را خواهد سوزاند advocates of these two ideas are two political groups who think things should be settled with force even the one who is denied the power is of the conviction that unconventional use of force would help them to secure their right under such circumstances this closed and destructive cycle of hegemonic tendencies at one side and terrorism at the other side the earth which was heralded by leaders of the western civilization to become the heavens promised by religions would become a burning hell that will burn indiscriminately تردید نیست که وابستگان به تمدن‌های قدیم می‌توانند درس‌های بسیاری از تمدن جدید آموخته و بهره‌های فراوانی از دستاوردهای آن ببرند. No doubt advocates of the ancient civilizations can learn many lessons from the new civilization and enjoy its achievements. ولی از سوی دیگر به خصوص با مشکلاتی که بعد از قرن‌ها وابستگان به تمدن جدید و آن روبرو شدند و ایرادات و اشکالاتی که از سوی صاحب نظران بزرگ غرب به این تمدن وارد شده و خلعهای فراوان به خصوص خلعهای معنوی که در آن احساس می شود با توجه به کاهش غرور انسان غربی در تمدنهای غیر غربی غرور, غرور انسان غربی در تمدنهای غیر غربی می توان نکته ها و ترفه های بسیاری ها on the other hand, the new civilization too has been faced with many problems and great Western thinkers have found faults with this civilization. It can learn lessons from the huge gaps, particularly spiritual ones, that mark the civilization and the fact that the dignity of humans has been on a decline in the civilization. As soon as the other people who are in the world of 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 the نظرشان به ارزش ها و حقایقی در فرهنگ و تمدن خیش معطوف شده است که بتواند سازگار با این تبلات و پدید آورنده جهانی تازه تر و شاداب تر باشد On the other hand, all advocates of non-Western civilizations long for development. They are attached to, the, to those interpretations of their culture and civilization that are more flexible to the advancements and developments in the world. Beyond their habits, they are enthused about values and realities in their culture and civilization that can be compatible with such developments and help them build a livelier world. هر دو طرف در میابند که هر تمدنی چیزهای فراوان برای گفتن دارد چنان که همیشه نیز گوشهای شنوایی یافت می شود که آن سخنها را بشنود چنان که شنیدند Both sides have come to the realization that each civilization has a great many things to say and that there will be ears to hear them as they have heard others حافظ شاعر و حکیم جرفندیش ایرانی زبانی دارد که گوته گوته آلمانی حتی از ورای ترجمه های نچندان شایسته آن را می شنود و ایزاتسو ژاپنی از امکان همزبانی بزرگترین عارف اسلامی محیدین ابن عربی با متفکران شرق دور سخن گفته است Hafiz, the prudent and profound Iranian poet, speaks a language which Goethe, the German 
poet, despite inappropriate translations, can hear. And the Japanese Izutsu speaks of the possibility of exchange of views between the greatest Islamic Gnostic Mohiddin Arabi and thinkers in the Fos. در اینجا نمی توان از ریشه های مشترک و زمینه های همزبانی برای رفع مشکلات جهانی در ادیان بزرگ به ویژه ادیان ابراهیمی سخن نگفت و اینها همه کار گفتگو را آسان می کنند Here we can certainly find roots and areas common among big faiths and particularly Abrahamic religions and faiths to address global issues and all these make dialogue easier امروز چه بخواهیم چه نخواهیم از همیشه وابسته تر به یک دیگریم از این رو نیازمند تر به یک نظم اخلاق جهانی هستیم ما باید بتوانیم پنجره دلها و ذهنهای من را به روی یک دیگر بکشاییم و به حرمت اجتماع جهانی و زیست بوم جهانی فرهنگ همبستگی را پاس داریم و به کار بندیم whether or not we want today we are more dependent on one another than any other time this is why we are in dire need of a global form of discipline and ethics we should be able to open our minds to one another and respect and apply a culture of unity in the interest of the global community and environment پرسش از اساسی از همین جا آغاز می شود با کدام مبنا و از کدام منظر می توان این گشودگی فرهنگی که حاصل آن گشودگی سیاسی است را در عین تفاوت و تکثر به وجود آوریم. The main question begins here. On what basis and from what aspect can we create this cultural opening, the result of which will be a political opening in spite of differences and plurality. به گمان من پاسخ نخست را باید در حوزه اخلاق اخلاق جست. و اگر فارغ از قاعده اخلاق جهانی نمی توان در پی نظم بهتر جهانی رفت پس جستجوی این اخلاق با رجوع به سرچشمه های تمدنی و فرهنگی خود گام محکم و امید بخش در گفتگو و نتیجه بخش بودن آن است I assume the very first response should be sought in the area of ethics if we cannot follow a global form of ethics to reach a better global discipline then making a reference to source of our culture and civilization can be firm and promising step in materialization of dialogue and making it be successful. دست به کار شدن همه ما برای تأمین عدالت، آزادی، صلح، پیشرفت، پیشرفت واقعی حقوق بشر، پاسداشت طبیعت و حفظ کره زمین یک ضرورت است. It is incumbent on all of us to get a work to build justice, freedom, peace, actual progress in human rights and protect the environment and our planet. ما هم در قبال یک نظم جهانی بهتر مسئولیت داریم و از این نظر و این نظر را نمیتوان فقط با توجیه و قرارداد و قانون پدید آورد و اعمال کرد. We are responsible for building a better global discipline and this cannot be achieved by justification, contracts or law. تحقق صلح، عدالت، آزادی، مدارا و محیط زیست پایدار به بینش و آمادگی همه مردان و زنان برای عمل عادلانه بستگی دارد. Achievement of peace, justice, freedom, tolerance and a sustainable environment will largely depend on the insight of all men and women and their intention to lead a fair life. و پدید آمدن این آمادگی مستلزم دستیابی و پایبندی به اخلاق جهانی متناسب با وضع جدید عالم است. And such preparation is in need of achieving and adhering to global ethics that is compatible to the new reality. حقوق بدون اخلاق به صورت جامع و شامل به دست نمی آید و بدون یک اخلاق جهانی واقع گرا نمی توان به همزیستی و بهزیستی در پرتو نظم جهانی بهتر دست یافت. Rights without ethics will not materialize fully and comprehensively and without realistic global ethics one cannot achieve a peaceful coexistence in the light of a better global discipline. اخلاق جهانی تسلط یک ایدولوژی جهانی بر همه و حتی یک دین بر ادیان دیگر نیست. Global discipline does not imply the dominance of one global ideology over 
all others or even a certain religion over others. مراد از اخلاق جهانی اجماعی اساسی است در باب ارزش‌های الزام‌آور و معیارهای فسخ ناپذیر و رفتارهای سودمند شخصی و حتی می‌توان این امر را به عنوان ارزشی که همه دین‌های الهی به آن فرا خواندند در نظر گرفت. What is intended by global discipline is a major collection of essential values, irrevocable criteria, and useful individual conducts. This collection can be considered as a value which all divine religions have called for. We don't just live for ourselves. We need to serve others. We don't just need to be a different community or a different community in different ways. ما باید برای ایجاد نظم اجتماعی و اقتصادی عادلانه ای بکوشیم که در آن هر کس بتواند برای نیل به توان کامل انسانی خود از فرصت و مجالی برابر با دیگران برخوردار باشد. We should not be living solely for ourselves. We should be at service of others too. No society or individual should be abused in a way or another. We should take an effort to create a just social and economic discipline in which Everyone can have equal rights to others in order to be able to use his or her capabilities to achieve as much in their lives as a human. می توان اصول چارچوب های اخلاق جهانی را در جرفای تعالیم دینی نیز جستجو کرد. The principles and framework of such global discipline exist in the depth of religious teachings. در تعالیم دینی این به خصوص ادیان ابراهیمی و بالاخص اسلامی اسلام اخلاقی وجود دارد که می تواند دردها و رنج های جهانی را به مدد عقل و اراده انسان تقلیل دهد. We can find these disciplines uh, in the depth of religious teachings, particularly those of Abrahamic religions, specifically Islam. Such principles can, with the assistance of wisdom and willpower, alleviate the pains of humans. می توان از میان ادیان اساس اجماع برای این اخلاق جهانی را استخراج کرد و همین امر می تواند موضوع گفتگوی میان تمدن ها و فرهنگ ها و به طور دقیق تر گفتگوی میان ادیان باشد from among religions one can extract the basis of consensus for the global discipline this very subject in itself can turn into a subject of dialogue of civilizations and cultures and more specifically dialogue of religions. And my final statement is that without having major consensus on a global form of ethics, one cannot immunize human communities against threats of despotism, discrimination, humiliation, and confusion. All these elements are the most important areas that trigger extremism and violence in today's world. Alawa baran shagufte shod be nazar mirasat dar jahan ban peyvasti kununi. فوری ترین مسئله این است که دردهای مشترک را بشناسیم و تعریف درستی از هدف مشترک برسیم و به تعریف درستی از هدف مشترک برسیم و آنگاه به ریشه های فرهنگ ها و تمدن ها رجوع کنیم و راه رسیدن به هدف مشترک را بیابیم و در کنار هم آن راه را طی کنیم Besides what has been mentioned so far what seems most urgent to accomplish in the tightly connected world of today is to identify common pains and reach an appropriate definition of a common goal. We should then make a reference to the roots of cultures and civilizations to find the route for reaching the common goal before we set our foot on the path. بشر امروز از دردهای بزرگی رنج می کشد. دردها در جهان برخوردار با دردهای محرومانی که دچار عقب ماندگی و هرمانند یکی نیست اما می توان در میان این دردها به دردی مشترک رسید که به نظر من مهمترین آنها ناامنی است Today humans suffer from enormous pains the pain in the developed world are not the types of pain people are exposed to privation and despair 
perhaps they are suffering from. However, we can spot on one common pain, and that is insecurity. No, I'm not the same as a country and a country. If a day is not the same as the poor, 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 امروز انسان برخوردار در پیشرفته ترین کشورها نیز با همه وجود احساس ناامنی می کنند. Insecurity does not particularly affect one nation alone. If one day certain people suffer from a lack of security caused by poverty, ignorance, diseases, humiliation, repression and homelessness, today people living in the most developed countries of the world feel insecure too. علاوه بر ناامنی های پیشین امروز زندگی انسان در نیویورک، واشنگتن، لندن و مادرید و دیگر نقاط جهان نیز امن نیست. In addition to previous forms of insecurity, humans do not have security in New York, Washington DC, London and Madrid or other parts of the world either. این ناامنی علاوه بر اینکه روح انسان را زخم دار کرده است اگر تداوم یابد زندگی را در همه جای عالم به جهنم سوزان مبدل خواهد کرد می توان ناامنی را به عنوان درد مشترک انسان این روزگار محور گفتگو قرار داد و برای آن راه حل مشترکی جست This massive, uh, this insecurity has not only injured the soul of humans, but will also be a source of massive agony to the whole world, if it is not stopped, of course. We can make insecurity as human's common pain in today's world, the subject of our dialogue, and seek a common solution to it. In spite of the painful world we are living in, we can reach a common goal, which is peace. We know that peace is not the meaning of the word of the word of the word. And we all know peace will not be achieved unless it is based on justice in the real sense of the word. سول خواهی و عدالت طلبی را می توان در متن همه فرهنگ ها و تمدن ها و به خصوص دین های بزرگ جست و جو کرد Seeking peace and injustice can be traced in the context of all cultures and civilizations particularly big religions دیگر درنگ جایز نیست و در ورای منافع و نظرات و سلایق گوناگون که می تواند به ستیز و رویارویی بی انجامد خیرخواهان بشر می توانند برای رهایی از ناامنی و برای استقرار صلح مبتنی بر ادالت نه تنها گفتگو را آغاز کنند و با بهرهگیری از ریشه های متقن فرهنگی و مدنی خود تلاش برای استقرار نظمی عادلانه بر جهان که به صلح بیانجامد اقدام نمایند It is no more sensible to hesitate beyond different tastes, views, and interests that can lead to conflicts and clashes, those people holding well wishes for humanity can begin a dialogue in the interest of freeing humanity from insecurity and building peace based on justice. In harakat, ifrat girayan khushunat talab ra khush nakhawad aamad. Wa be hamin dalil, baraye hambar kardane راه از جمله باید همگی علیه افراد و خشونت در هر, سدو هر سوی جان که باشد متحد شد Such an initiative will not appeal to extremists We should proceed hand in hand and unite against extremism and violence in whichever part of the world we are living in از حوصله شما سپاس خوزارم Thank you for your kind attention
your behalf. Let me thank Dr Katami for his wise and very optimistic presentation. I think we have some time for questions. You will appreciate that the questions need to be translated, and so could I ask you to be as brief as possible when you frame your uh, question. Mr Hashimi will translate the question either to English or the other way. And, and we need to take this quite, quite carefully. I think you should perhaps be at the microphone. We will also be using microphones in the audience, so I'll try and catch your attention. It's a little difficult to see you from the lights, uh, and I'll try and uh, allow the time for the microphone to arrive at your position. Yeah. So if we could take the first question, please. Let me pick one here, but we need the microphone. I was looking for a questioner closer to the side. <laughs> no. It's on? Um, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful talk. In that spirit, can you imagine any set of circumstances under which you and the Iranian nation could coexist with the state of Israel? If so, what are they? ملت ایران ملتی تمدن ساز و طبعا سلخا The Iranian nation uh, is indeed a, a nation who has created a civilization and is always seeking peace ما اگر ملت هایی که تمدن ساختن تمدن جهانی ساختن در نظر بگیریم شاید به تعداد انگشتان دستمون نباشه and if we consider the number of the nations who have achieved building a civilization in the history of humankind, it's just a handful of countries or nations. The Iranian nation created a great civilization before Islam a long time ago. And after Islam, Iranians contributed a lot in uh, promotion of the Islamic state. And the Iranian nation is the great symbol of tolerance and coexistence among different ethnic groups that are living in one country together. So that's why Iranian nation have always looked forward to coexistence with all the nations all around the world. But uh, with due respect to the crisis that is going on in the Middle East, I think the crisis should be resolved through a just approach considering the rights of all the stakeholders of the crisis. So it requires a global will. And if such solution based on justice would be realized, I think, uh, of course, we have to observe the rights of the, all the ethnic groups and different uh, stakeholders in this region. 
uh, for sure we would be able to achieve a sustainable peace in the region in which all the humans would live next to each other like brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I suppose the sorry. Thank you very much. I suppose the question should be uh, when Israel can coexist with the Palestinian people before anyone else can coexist with Israel. So uh, when Israel coexists with the Palestinian people, then I think other people in the region will coexist peacefully with Israel. My question is uh, regarding <laughs> regarding the uh, um, dialogue of civilization, uh, what stage is it at now and what obstacles um, uh, you face in achieving a truly dialogue of civilization? Thank you. من اشاره کردم که صلح در خاورمیانه یک ضرورت برای همه ملت‌های منطقه است. As I stated previously, uh, peace in the Middle East is a necessity for everyone. و بیش از نیم قرن هست که ما در منطقه به خصوص ما که در منطقه هستیم هر لحظه با بحران‌های شدید روبرو هستیم. And it's been more than a half a century, over 60 years, that we are suffering from different crises coming up every day in our region, the region we are living in. بنابراین برای کشورهای منطقه از جمله ایران اگر سول برقرار بشه و بحران نباشه خیلی استفاده های داره و به خصوص برای پیشرفتشون که نیازمند ثبات و امنیت هست. And uh, for countries like Iran, which is located in that region, if there would be a peace and no crisis anymore, for sure it would contribute to a better development of the country. And as I stated previously, peace can be built and be established based on justice. And if it is based on justice, it would be sustainable. And if we pass the emotions that we feel inside and go beyond that and get to the realities, I think then we can achieve such kind of a goal. بیش از نیم قرن که بیش از چهار میلیون نفر فلسطینی از سرزمین خودشون رانده شدند. It's been more than half a century that four million Palestinians have been pushed away from their homeland. شما در اینجا در استرالیا ما در ایران سایر کشورها در کشورهای خودشون زندگی نسبتا مناسبی دارند. You in Australia, we in Iran and people in their own homelands, they have rather peaceful lives. ولی میلیون ها فلسطینی در کمپ ها به دنیا میان در کمپ ها زندگی میکنن و در کمپ ها میمیرند. But millions of Palestinians still they are born in ghettos in camps. They live there and they die there. و متاسفانه این ابتدایی ترین اصل انسانی را که اینا حق بازگشت به سرزمین خودشون دارن و حق تعیین سرنوشتشون دارن به رسمیت شناخته نمیشه. And unfortunately the, the most basic right of a human being which is the, the right to go back to the homeland and decide about his own destiny have been they have been deprived of. و متاسفانه قدرت هایی که مدعی هستن که میخوان صلح رو برقرار بکنن حقوق این جمعیت گذاف رو نمی بینند و فقط یک طرف حقوقش رو در نظر می گیرند. And unfortunately, the uh, powers that are actually they are claiming that they are following up the peace treaties and everything, uh, they do not see the rights of the other side of the equilibrium. من معتقدم که ما مسلمان ها یهودی های دنیا مسیح های دنیا با دست به دست هم بدیم و بکوشیم که زمینه های بی ادالتی از بین بره اون وقت شما مطمئن باشید که صلح پایدار هم برقرار خواهد شد. I think Muslims, Jews, Christians all around the world should have hand in hand and do our utmost effort 
in order to remove injustice and create justice, then all these crises will be over one day. But dialogue among civilization is a process. And we, the, it, it has many enemies and the ones who are against it. Particularly the politicians who are uh, establishing their approaches based on force. But I am strongly of the opinion that among all the human beings, dialogue has a very special particular role and position. پیشنهاد این که سال 2001 گفتگوی تمدن‌ها باشه و این که سازمان ملل یک تأسیساتی برای گفتگوی تمدن‌ها ایجاد کرد ما شاهد پیشرفت‌های بزرگی در این زمینه بودیم. And uh, uh, at 2001 when the United Nations on based on a consensus decided to call 2001 the uh, year for dialogue among civilizations the United Nations decided about some the, uh, tools and uh, means and ways in order to establish it. Several centers for dialogue among civilizations have been established in a variety of universities. خوب در این زمینه نوشته شده. And thousands of articles have been written on the subject. دهها کتاب معتبر در این زمینه تعلیف شده است. Tens of volumes of books have been authored on the subject. صدها نشست های معتبر بین المللی در این زمینه برقرار شده. And hundreds of international reputable meetings and workshops on this subject have been convened. خود من هم یکی از کارهای مهم بعد از دوران ریاست جمهوریم ایجاد بنیاد گفتگوی تمدن‌ها و فرهنگ‌ها در ژنو بوده. And one of the uh, most important achievements I had after my term as president is uh, establishing the foundation for dialogue among civilization and cultures based in Geneva. که بسیاری از شخصیت شخصیت‌های معتبر جهانی، سیاسی، فرهنگی، علمی، دینی به عنوان اعضای عالی رتبه و عالی مقام این مرکز فعال هستند. <coughs> And many of the eminent uh, politicians, uh, religious people, are a member to the Board of Governors of this institute. Uh, and there are, among them, there are uh, the uh, great politicians uh, that uh, you know most of them. Great researchers and university professors are a member to the board. And eminent uh, that are uh, working on different uh, religions and subjects. As Jumla Rahbarani Barjaste Dini, as Masiyat, as Yahudiyat, as Islam, as Buddhist, the Sahir Shaksiat Hoike, Sahib Adyan Bozorgiastan, Bama Ham Karimikunan. In this institute at the Board of Governors, we have uh, religious leaders from the world of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, and many other eminent personalities. Of course, there are a variety of obstacles on the way, too. یک میلیونی اون را اختصاص میداد به مسئله گفتگوی تمدن ها خیلی کار ما زودتر پیش می رفت. Considering all these obstacles, if just one percent or couple of percentage of what is allocated to produce WMDs, the weapon of mass destruction, or to suppress people here and there, was allocated to the subject of dialogue among civilizations, we could have achieved much more than this. معمولا هم تجربه تاریخ اینه که اون جایی که عقل و انصاف هست امکانات مادی کمه و اون جایی که امکانات مادی زیاده عقل و انصاف وجود نداره. I think that's the bitter lesson that we will learn out of the history that wherever uh, wisdom and justice is there there is no money to promote it and where there is money there is no wisdom and justice. <laughs> رابورت های گفتگوی تمدن این است که انشالله امکانات مادی و واقعی هم در خدمت عقل و انصاف قرار بکیریم. And one of these obstacles that um, 
we have to remove is to create the possibility that the, the material or the financial allocations would be available for such kind of uh, campaign that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. You've discussed the goal of ethnic groups living in peace and harmony together as well as the rights of the individual to fulfill their individual basic freedoms, including the expression of religion. Can you explain why the Iranian prosecutor general has declared an affiliation to the Baha'i faith illegal, which is in direct conflict with the UN Charter of Human Rights? Mucha امیدوارم که روزی برسد که هیچ انسانی متعلق به هر دینی، هر آینی، هر مرامی هست دوچار زندان و گرفتاری نشه. Thank you for this question. I'm wishing and looking forward for the day in which no human kind, human being would be incarcerated because of its religious beliefs. هیچ هیچ کس از دستگیری محاکمه و مجازات هیچ انسانی نباد خوشنود بشه and no one i believe would be happy hearing that somebody is uh, actually pressed charges against or tried or incarcerated ولی به هر حال متاسفانه جرم و خلاف در دنیای امروز ما وجود داره but unfortunately we are living in a world full of crimes and offenses و متاسفانه هنوز در دنیا زندان های زیادی هستند که انسان هایی رو when we are living in a world that we have many prisons in which many inmates are living. البته ما باید نگران باشیم که خدای نکرده انسان ها بی جرم گرفتار بشن. اگر این جور باشه خیلی بده. And it would be terrible to see someone incarcerated without any justification. هیچ کم نمیتونه ادعا بکنه دیگه که در هیچ جای دنیا اینطور نیست که همه کسانی که گرفتار میشن انسان های and I think nobody will, will be in a position to claim that in my country there is no one incarcerated without any crimes. For sure, we would have such injustice. And I think the governments should uh, decide and conduct based on justice, and of course, while they are uh, fighting against uh, crimes. بشر برای اینکه به این نتیجه برسد که کسانی به خاطر اعتقاداتشون و دلبستگیهاشون تحت تعقیب و فشار نباشند، هزینه خیلی سنگی نداده. In the history of mankind, we have paid heavy prices in order not to have the people who have been incarcerated because of their beliefs. آزادی اندیشه، آزادی عقیده، آزادی بیان از دستاوردهای مهمی است که با هزینه‌های گران به دست انسان رسیده و باید ازش طرفداری کرد. The freedom of thought and speech we have paid a lot for, and we have to have the guardianship of it. خوشبختانه در قانون اساسی جمهوری اسلامی ایران هم به این مسئله اعتراف شده و تاکید شده است. And in the Iranian uh, constitution it has been reiterated. بنده عرض میکنم که اگر چند نفر از هموطنان بهایی ما ممکن است در زندان باشند چندین هزار نفر مسلمان شیعی هم در زندان های جمهوری اسلامی هستند و بنا بر این بوده و هست که هر کس که جرم کرده با او برخورد بشه. Of course, the basis is that the one who have committed uh, an offense should be incarcerated. And uh, while we have some of our Baha'i compatriots uh, incarcerated, we have uh, thousands of uh, Shiite Muslims that are in jail as well. بنابراین ما باید بکوشیم که انسان ها بی گناه به زندان نیفتن نه این که اگر کسی مجرم بود او معاف بشود از برخورد با او. We have to be careful and uh, do our utmost effort not to incarcerate the one who hasn't committed any crime. And the criminals would face the justice. 
کسی تحت تعقیب و فشار قرار نگیره It is the principle stipulated in the constitution of Iranian constitution that nobody should be incarcerated because of the beliefs. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you about Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, history tells us that Iran has had long linkages with uh, the countries of Afghanistan and Pakistan. And as we all know, since the President Obama has come into power, his top foreign affairs priority is to bring peace into that region. Uh, could you tell us how the nation of Iran could support NATO and US aligned, allied countries to build the nation of Afghanistan and to root out terrorism from Pakistan. متشکرم افغانستان و پاکستان دو همسایه بزرگ ما هستند که ما امنیتمون رو در رابطه با امنیت اونها تعریف می‌کنیم. Afghanistan and Pakistan are two great neighbors of Iran and we define our security in line with their security in their homeland. متاسفانه افغانستان در 30 سال گذشته رنجای فراوانی دیده. And unfortunately Afghanistan have suffered in the past 3 decades. ملت افغانستان شایسته زندگی بهتر هست. And the Afghan nation deserve a better life standards to live in. نه اشغال چندین ساله شوروی ها نصیبی جز تخریب و تحقیر برای ملت افغانستان داشت. The uh, occupation of the Soviet Union in Afghanistan resulted in destruction and humiliation of the Afghan nation. And none of these problems have been resolved by the uh, extreme government. The uh, occupation of the Soviet Union in Afghanistan resulted in destruction and humiliation of the Afghan nation. And none of these problems have been resolved by the uh, extreme government that was running the country for years. And and even now, the uh, foreign troops occupying Afghanistan have not resulted in resolving a couple of uh, terrible situations they are suffering from. And the neighboring countries of Afghanistan should do their effort best of efforts in order to give this opportunity to the Afghans to create their own security by their own hands. We, they have to reinforce the central government. We have to fight against the uh, poppy cultivation there and the drug trafficking from Afghanistan. And the economic pillars of people living in Afghanistan should be reinforced. And my main question is that during these years that Afghanistan have been occupied by foreign troops, how far they have been able to contribute to the better economic situation there or to remove poverty. از زمانی که بنده روی کار بودم تا کنون تولید و کشت و تجارت مواد مخدر حداقل دو برابر شده در این زمان. As of the time that I was in office as president so far, the production and trafficking of drugs from Afghanistan at least have been doubled. من فکر می‌کنم که تنها کشوری که توانسته عملاً کمک به افغانستان بکنه ایرانه. 
and I think uh, the only one and only country to have been uh, practically contributing to the situation in Afghanistan have been Iran as a neighbor. Uh, uh, building uh, roads which are very safe. کمک در حد توان برای تقویت بهداشت و کشاورزی در افغانستان also contributing to the health and agriculture sector in Afghanistan و سایر امور که من الان نمیخوام اینجا آمار بدم and some other issues which I do not have in mind اما این کمک به این صورت از سوی دیگران نسبت افغانستان نشده است but other countries have not contributed likewise و متاسفانه امنیت افغانستان هم امروز تا حدود زیادی لرزان تر از گذشته شده and unfortunately the security and peace in Afghanistan is more shaker than before و متاسفانه بخش هایی از این کسایی که نیرو را ناامن می کنند به نحوی از آنها در پاکستان وجود دارند and unfortunately some of the groups who are contributing to insecurity in Afghanistan are located and living in part of Pakistan و متاسفانه دست های خارجی هم در کار هست که نگذار پاکستان که یه دوره خیلی خوبی برای تجربه دموکراسی و پیشرفت داشت بتواند روی امنیت رو ببینه اختلافات رو بهش دامن میزنه و بحران ها رو هر روز ایجاد میکنه and we can see some foreign hands in action not giving this opportunity to pakistan to experience the democracy that they have established and they are contributing to conflicts among ethnic groups ما یه داستانی داریم که اینجا نقل میکنم که داستان ماست there is a story, our story, that I would like to share it with you. یک انسان خیلی بد قیافه یک کودکی رو بغل کرده بود و این کودک خیلی گریه می کرد. A man who was uh, very ugly. Or a woman. Uh, or a woman, know. maybe. Who knows? Why man? Anyway, someone, male or female, who was very ugly, uh, cuddled a baby. In هی نوازش میکرد این کودک که آرام بشه اونم جیغش بیشتر در میومد بیشتر گریه میکرد though he was cuddling the baby and saying nice things to the baby but the baby was more and more getting furious and crying and whipping یک نفر رسید گفت اصلا این قیافه تو سبب میشه که این بچه اینقدر گریه بکنه او رو بگذار زمین آرام میشه someone came and uh, told him that just leave the baby alone he would be quiet that your face is the real cause حالا اونهایی که از اون سوی دنیا را میفتن با عده و عده میان امنیت برای ما ایجاد بکنن خودشون منشه ناامنی میشه ازشون میخوایم که خواهش میکنیم دست از سر ما برداریم ما خودمون میتونیم امنیت و ثبات و پیشرفت رو تأمین کنیم So we see that uh, some uh, troops are coming uh, all the way from other side of the world there in order to establish peace and security there We tell them that just leave them alone they would not cry anymore I'm right here. Thank you. Please let me just be clear that the person who has the microphone present is not the person that I call. Um, I am prepared to take two questions if that's all right by the way. Oh, yeah. I, I hope we are observing the rights of the people who are sitting up there. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to manage the technological perspective. So two questions. The second question from, from you there, please. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Khatami, firstly, welcome to Australia. Uh, you mentioned in your speech that it is the right of each individual to be able to pursue their goals and their interests to the best of their ability. However, the Baha'is, who represent the largest religious minority in Iran, continue to be refused entry to public universities due to their religious convictions. Now, the Baha'i faith, its central tenet is unity of peace and of fellowship. Can you please, I have two questions. The first one is, for what reason are Baha'is continually being denied access to these universities? And secondly, to what extent will the government facilitate their entry and allow these young, capable and intelligent Baha'is to pursue the right that you mentioned of pursuing their goals to the best of their ability? Thank you. Man <laughs> تئوری هیچ گونه منعی برای پیروان ادیان مختلف یا گرایش‌های مختلف 
برای برخورداری از حقوق شهروندی وجود نداره نه در قانون اساسی ما نه در قانون های مدون ما As I stated in theory at least on the paper in our constitution uh, the rights of all the citizens should be observed and they should not be deprived of their rights البته ممکن است در بخش های بعضی سخت گیری های کارهای خلافی انجام بگیره که در همه جا این امکان وجود داره ولی این رو نباید به حساب حکومت و نظام گذاشت Of course uh, there may be some wrong doings or uh, not observing the rights of some of the citizens here and there in any country but it should not be uh, justified or defined as a part of the government itself only از جمله در دوران ریاست جمهوری خود من بعضی شکایت ها اینجور بود که بعضی سخت گیری های میشه برای ورود به دانشگاه یا بعضی فعالیت ها برای بعضی از هموطنان ما Even during my term uh, in office as president, I've been receiving uh, some claims that uh, there have been uh, some problems uh, rejecting the rights of the people, some ethnic groups or religious groups getting into universities. Uh, I faced it. I removed this obstacle. And uh, I removed this obstacle through uh, lots of efforts, and the ones who were not that much open to these rights, uh, uh, they were uh, actually, uh, we did our best to refrain them from acting such. من به عنوان شهروند ایرانی عرض می کنم که واقعا برای برگزاری مناسک برای برگزاری رفتارها در ایران به عنوان حکومت هیچ کنه من ای برای هیچ شکل شهروندان وجود ندارم. As an Iranian citizen, I would like to reiterate that there is no uh, obstacle on the way of conducting the rituals in the country by the government at least. And the basis to get admitted to university or get assigned to different jobs uh, is not theoretically based on beliefs. در این حال باید بکوشیم که اگر بعضی وقتها در بعضی جاها مشکلات وجود داره انشالله با تدبیر این مشکلات رو هم حل بکنیم And on the other hand if some uh, would like to uh, reject these rights we have to do our utmost effort not to give them the chance and remove these obstacles من بارها گفته بودم وقتی که رئیس جمهور بودم من فقط رئیس جمهور مسلمان ها و اون شیعیان نیستم من رئیس جمهور هر ایرانی هستم که در هر کجای دنیا که هست از جمله در وطن بزرگم during my term in office as president i couple of times reiterated that i am not the president of the muslim iranians i'm the president of all iranian citizens wherever they are in homeland or all other countries around the world و امیدوارم که در همه دنیا نظام هایی که سر کار هستند نماینده همه افراد ملتشون با هر رنگ و نژاد و دین و آینی که هستند باشه And I hope that all over the world, the politicians, the uh, people who are in charge of the governments, re represent their nation, forgetting about their ethnic groups or the religious affiliations. In Arzu Emas, and typical Zarbul Masale Irani Arzu bar Jawanan Ebnis. And this is the best of my wishes for everyone, as we say in Persian literature. We say, uh, wishing is uh, the only thing that the young people would like to devise, not the old people. And we are young still. Last question. Another question. One final question, provided we can have a microphone up there. Thank you very much for your speech this evening. It was very interesting. My question relates to women in Iran. When will women in Iran, as they go about their daily lives in their homes and in public spaces, be able to enjoy the same personal freedoms as men. Man bo unwan ye mutakhassis dini arz mikonam ki اگر به عمق تعالیم اسلام بنگریم برابری رو در همه جا و همه چیز میان زنان و مردان می نگریم As an expert in religion, a man of religion 
I would like to uh, underline that if we go to the real deep principles of Islam, you would see equity and equality between men and women. Albate, ممکن است در طول تاریخ و تحت تاثیر شرایط مختلف بعضی دیدگاه‌هایی به وجود آمده باشد که این دیدگاه‌ها رابطی به اصل اسلام نداره بلکه ناشی از به اصطلاح تفکر انسان‌ها در زمان و مکان‌های خاصی هستش. But uh, during the history and evolution of humankind happened uh, some interpreted the religion in a way that we are witnessing that there is no equality for men and women and it doesn't have anything to do with the real principles of Islam. و ما اگر دو عنصر زمان و مکان رو در استنباط خودمون از دین و هر چیز دیگری در نظر بگیریم ما شاهد تحولات بزرگ در دیدگاه ها خواهیم بود and if we seriously consider two major elements of time and space in our religious interpretations for sure we would not face such obstacles امروز ممکن است که به لحاظ حقوقی و به لحاظ ضوابطی که هست یک نوع اختلافاتی هنوز وجود داشته باشه انشان که در بسیاری از کشورها البته به شکل دیگری ممکنه این اشکالات وجود داشته باشه as we may witness in uh, other countries as well maybe as a matter of legal interpretation there are some problems in this respect ولی ما در این زمان تحولات خیلی زیادی داشتیم در کشورمون but so far we have achieved uh, a lot in this regard اولا معتقدم در زمینه حقوق اساسی اختلاف میان زن و مرد تقریبا در نظام حقوقی ما وجود نداره in our uh, legal system uh, i can say that uh, approximately there is uh, no difference uh, uh, as a matter of uh, principled rights among men and women in iran خوشبختانه زمینه رشد فکری زنان در جامعه خیلی زیاد شده and hopefully women uh, have enjoyed uh, the right in order to develop their position in the society امروز از سال تقریبا سوم ریاست جمهوری بنده تعداد پذیرفته شدگان در دانشگاه ما تعداد زنان بیش از مردان بود and as of the third year of my term in office as president so far uh, the number of the female uh, admissions to universities is much more than the men من یادم که سال سومی که من ریاست جمهوری بودم 64 درصد پذیرفته شدگان زن بودند و 36 درصد مرد I remember during my term in office, even it is more now, 64% of the admissions were girls and 36% boys. Even some claim that now the, uh, the rights of the men are not observed because most of the students are girls.